Wow, what a day it's been. Hey, this is Paul coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here with Rod with Radiant Roofing Solutions, and I am not at the International Space Station, even though it looks like it. We are in my home. I, uh, I'm a buildings trades guy, kind of. I took it in high school with Mr. Hunter, and attics has been something that's bothered me for a while in my house where it's so damn hot up there and it's a struggle for the AC unit to really um, keep up. So I was looking into a lot of different possible solutions to that. And of course, the, the new rage lately has been spray foam. And we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit, a little bit later. But what I found was something completely different. And I got a professional here, Rod, with uh, Radiant uh, Roofing Solutions, who has an alternative system that's a lot cheaper, a lot less evasive, and a lot less a lot easier to maintenance. So I'm going to kind of pass it off to Rob, the professional here, just to talk about it a little bit, maybe show us a sample, and then we can just kind of kick it around with a lot of the benefits of that. So Rod, uh, I'll hand it off to you with, uh, you know, a little bit of the details about Radiant Barrier, what it is, you know, and things of that nature. Well, the first thing to know about Radiant Barrier is it's a it's not insulation. Insulation it can be compared to a sponge for heat. If you put a sponge under your kitchen faucet, run the water in it, it'll absorb a little bit and then it'll pour right through. That's what insulation does with heat. So you're filling up your insulation layer up to the capacity of the R value, the thermal resistance, and then it's radiating right through into your house. So no matter how much insulation you use, whether it's uh, fiberglass, cellulose, or spray foam, there is a point where it will radiate on through. Um, now, radiant barrier, by contrast, is a thin material that reflects heat. So, what we do is put this up very thin at very the thin. point of entry of the heat in the attic and reflect it back where it came from. So, all the heat coming through those shingles, which are too hot to touch, 160 degrees in the summer that heat is reflected into the space between the rafters and drawn by passive uh, heat rising up into the ridge vent and out of the out of the home so the attic stays cool and uh, your ac unit runs much less which saves money which pays for itself uh, in the winter it's in reverse the heat that rises up out of the living space instead of being gone once it hits the attic it hits that radiant barrier up above and it's reflected back in, keeping the attic warm and keeping the home warm. Fantastic. You know, now we were talking about, I've, I've read a lot or seen a lot that they say it almost stops 97% of that radiant heat. That's the reflectivity. Yeah, and the key to this stuff too, and I'm just gonna kind of pitch off of what he's talking about here is that it can't be touched against directly against the, the the roofing rafters, or I should say the, the deck boards, because then you got conduction, which the, the, the radiant barrier would get hot. So you have to be off of the actual surface that's radiating the heat. And so what's perfect about the attic and these rafters is you've got rafters that are holding up the deck boards, which of course hold the um, shingles. This staples right to those rafters, and those rafters are like built-in channels or raceways, perfect for allowing the cool in air to come in from the eave and as the air is getting hot coming up the side of the house it channels it right up those uh, those channels those uh, runners right up to the peak to where the it exits out the top through the uh, the vent what do we call the ridge, the ridge vent so it's like it's built for this system so that's what really impressed me about this so um, one of the other pieces we could talk about is like maintenance like if I ever had an issue going forward and we needed to get at the roof all I have to do is take a razor and cut and have access complete access to it and then what do I how do, how do I seal it up well I just take the silver tape that you can see where the seams are and I tape it back up and that's it now with <laughs> Zero cellular maintenance. with cellular foam that you're going to shoot up there first of all it's probably how much more expensive would you say double or about what double. would you say it's about double depending on the application you know uh -huh. some attics are way more labor intensive than others uh -huh. especially if there's roof trusses where we have to tape around everything you know when okay. we're done it's one membrane so yeah so every structure is a little every bit different, different but i would say it's at least half the cost and 
accessibility if you need to do something you know when you're shooting that spray foam that's like glue you're done um that's a problem to get that removed it, this is not the case it makes it hard to find like if you you have a uh, leak in your roof yeah it's very hard to find with the spray foam because yeah. it's glued to the roof decking right it's the water hiding gets it. trapped it's just and it, up, it ends up, up molding the the roof decking gotcha. if there is a problem with the roof Another other thing we brought up, we were discussing, is how toxic the, when you're spray foaming, I mean, the gases that you're gassing off in there. Right. I mean, these people are coming in with respirators, and they say, oh, it'll air out, it'll air out. Well, yeah, I'm sure it will, but, you know, that's a lot of toxic uh, chemicals that you're putting up in your ass. The other thing, too, about spray foam is the, it ends up with a lot of dead air. It, there's no, not much ventilation in a spray foam attic where the uh, radiant barrier we we allow ventilation all over yeah it's still so, breathing I, yeah. you know i have uh, i'll piggyback off that i have read where a lot of people spray foam their attics and they're like paul or not paul but they, they they complain that hey they can't get any ventilation through their house like they can't even when they're trying to exhaust fumes from their bathrooms from showers it's yeah it, it's the house just simply can't breathe now it's sealed up so tight that it's a problem you, you can know over I mean? over seal a house right right so again you know i'll just kind of try to pan around here a little bit so you guys can see this very simple so basically they're taking the stuff which, which is almost similar to like tin foil but a little tougher so it <laughs> very doesn't much rip. tougher right this has a mylar <laughs> coating on both sides so it has a 25 year uh warranty fantastic a good point warranty and uh, then they just tape up the seams and, uh, you know, it looks really simple. Sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this gets smoking hot. This guy had to get here early in the morning and we had to wait till October. I really wanted to do it during the summer. But again, supply chain issues, just too damn hot to ask somebody to get up here. Let's talk about temperatures next. Too damn hot to get up here and operate when it's that, that hot. We do it, but it ends up stretching the, the job out longer. Absolutely, because I totally agree. I mean, you can't operate. And, and you're trying to stretch between rafters. People are frustrated. It's hot. It, it, you're asking for a problem. Um, but, you know, the average home is about 125 degrees, you know, during the peak of summer. Give, give or take how good, you know, I guess your, what color shingles you have, this layout of your home. But we're talking about um, with this, you're getting within five degrees roughly of what the outside temperature is. So you actually know, in Georgia, you can end up at 150 to 160. Can you just depending? Well, so mine was mine was pretty light. I had good you had cut, good ventilation. I had good ventilation without ridge vent, without good soffit vent intake air. Uh -huh. You can you can get over 150. Gotcha. So the difference between the radiant barrier attic and a non-radiant barrier attic is phenomenal. We're within five degrees of the ambient temperature outside, and then uh, the uh, insulation that you have is generally plenty to keep that from Yeah, it can really the, operate a lot better, your right. insulation then. And instead of in the summertime, your AC unit running nonstop in the afternoon, every step you take upstairs gets hotter and hotter. Right. <laughs> All those temperatures are evened out. Your AC unit kicks on for 10-minute cycles instead of 40-minute cycles. And the energy savings is is rapid. Yep. And, you know, it's funny. As I'm filming this, I'm looking and everybody can see. Well, you look at my runners for my AC unit. What are they wrapped in? Radiant barrier. Radiant barrier. And everybody's got it, but nobody does it in their house. So that's interesting. Also, you think about it, It's like, okay... Well, NASA uses it on the International Space Station to keep things cool and, and or hot to keep the heat away. Well, why, why wouldn't we use it in our house? It's so inexpensive. It's so light. It's, it's very durable. It, and 97% of the, the radiant heat, it can basically stop. Um, okay, so I think we've, I know this is pretty long, but let's, let's talk about the difference. So now, if you can see here, I've got my AC unit. So why am I doing this? Because I had my AC portion replaced. Now, of course, AC is not cheap, right? Well, as I was talking to Rod in our initial discussions, it's like, hey, Paul, you're trying to, and everybody's like this, that has an attic, right? And your AC unit's up here. He's like, you're trying to make ice cubes in an oven. He says, it's 130 degrees up here, and you're asking this thing to give you like 65 degree temperatures. It's just, it's very difficult. And then you think about it, well, you've got 135 degrees throughout your whole square footage, your footprint of your attic, pushing down on top through the insulation into the ceiling of your home. Okay, that's another thing that it's fighting. And then on top of it, we have these 
air conditioning vents that are just laying in this heat and just baking in this little, this is only what R6 or R9 yeah. on here when it's required in the floor for like R30, <laughs> I believe. Right. And your AC is running through here. So when your AC turns off, this is baking with hot air. So when you turn your AC on, what's the first thing to come out? Warm, hot air. And then the cool air starts coming. One of the other huge things is people say you need storage, right? Well, now I can store things up here. I can lay down some more plywood. I can store things because my temperature variant isn't going to be that bad. Your suitcases won't melt. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so there's a lot of benefits to this. Um, one of the small things I noticed, I have one light bulb in here, and it lights up this whole place now because of, the, you know, the reflectivity of mm -hmm. this, you know. Small thing, but we'll take it. Um, anything else, Rod? I, I thought this was really needed to be shown to people because how easy it is, how it, you know effective and reasonably priced that anybody else, I just feel like I need to share it with my neighbors, anybody else who's in the Southern, let's talk about this, in the Southern region, I think is really where you get the most well, bang for your buck. It's balanced the other way in the North. They're more <sighs> concerned with keeping the heat in uh -huh. and it, it does the same quality of job of that as mm -hmm. uh, keeping the heat out but uh, in in wrapping it up I would just say that we're putting the the radiant barrier no at, intended. <laughs> at the uh, <laughs> point of attack right it's doing the heavy lifting where the heat enters the home uh -huh. rather than w letting the heat in it's kind of like not having a security system on your home letting everybody in and then having a security guard <laughs> trying to good point getting them out like after it, they're yeah. already in you're letting the heat in then you're spending money to condition air to extract the heat back out where it came from. Why not just keep it out to begin with? Right. And you got a system already built in your home, these rafters and the ridge vents that basically does exactly what it needs it to do. It runs those channels. It runs that heat right up the rafters. So I plan on doing a vid video in the summer, I'm thinking, of actually cutting a little hole and doing a comparison of how hot it is in here during the peak of the summer and how, how much heat is being ran through these rafters and keeping it out from here. Um, well, by the way, Paul, we'll yeah. talk about hiring you. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, this is, this is just something that, you know, I've got some real high expectations. I've watched a lot. Let's jump over to the quality of this install here with Rod. Why did I pick him? Well, I've watched a lot of installations where, you know, they've got manufacturers out there trying to sell you on installing this yourself. Can you do it? Yeah. Would the quality be there? No way. Um, also, he's got a little, some secrets he does here to, to make it even better. Um, we don't want to go into that too much, but this guy, um, I know what it is, and, and I, it totally makes sense what he's doing. Um, but not, you know, I'm a do-it-yourselfer, but, you know, I might get up here with my teenagers, which hates to do stuff, and then possibly one of us fall through the, the <laughs> ceilings down here, break her leg, repairs, not going to do it, not going to do it. We've this... been called by a lot of homeowners that started to do it uh -huh. and bailed after about two hours. <laughs> yeah, and you know, not to mention it gets warm. So, yeah. uh, so I think we've covered a lot here it's... for people to really start doing some research and yeah. watch some. I mean, if you guys watch some YouTube videos, some installs, you will see this looks completely different than what other people are doing. It's completely sealed in all the way up to the top. Um, basically, and um, so you're really maximizing the savings and keeping this area um, close to a, a reasonable temperature. So again, your furnaces, you're not going to replace your furnace or your AC unit nearly as often. This thing's only going to kick on for five, ten minutes at the max. Every, you know, who knows? Every, every house is going to be different, but it's much less. It's going to be colder air. It's going to run less. So you've got all sorts of gains you're going to do off of this. Now, is it a little bit of investment up front? But yes, much more tolerable than spray foam. Well, the, the only thing to remember, too, is you're paying the money anyway in your utility bill. Yeah. Over time, the savings pay for this. So it's the same money you're already pay, paying out. Right. So Good point. Good point. So, and again, this guy had his team here on time. They wanted to start, start at 630 in the morning, of course, because the, the sun is their enemy and um, they got it all done in one day. But again, every home is different. Um, very easy to work with. Guys are super nice, very conscientious, very, you know, taking good care, doing a good job on everything. So again, this is Rod with Radiant Roofing Solutions here in Atlanta. Uh, if you're in Atlanta, give him a call. Go onto his website. He's got a ton of pictures of the attics he does. But he also does, obviously, shingles as well. But 
I didn't need that. I just had shingles put on many, uh, I don't know, two, three years ago. But anyways, um, take a look at what, what it looks like and what these jobs. He's got a lot better pictures than this video, but I thought this would be helpful for everybody. So, Rod, I appreciate you coming back for this video so we could get this out there. Hopefully this would help with some business, but also for helping people see that there is an alternate solution to spray foam. Appreciate the time, Paul. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.